She was a sports icon in the world of tennis. We're talking about Billie Jean King, the winner of 39, yes, 39 Grand Slam singles, doubles, and mixed doubles tennis titles, including a record 20 titles at Wimbledon. She is a living legend, but she is also now living with diabetes. And, you know, the thing is, she's not alone. An alarming 70% of adults ages 65 and older either have diabetes or pre-diabetes, and if left untreated or unmanaged, diabetes can have very serious health consequences in the long run. We are so pleased to be joined by Billie Jean King this morning. Good morning to you. Hi, Danielle. How are you? I am so good. You know, before we get into that, you know, it's interesting because I just talked about all the wonderful accolades that you've received, but do you always still get asked about beating the boys? <laughs> Every day since 1973 when since I go out the door of the apartment. I know I'm going to get asked about... Oh, who's that guy? He played Bobby, Billy, Lou. It's Bobby Riggs, in case you're wondering. Yeah, in 19, that, that was in, uh, 1973? Yeah, September 20th, 1973. Wow, and here we are still being asked about that. What, what was that feeling like? Because there was such hype and buildup to that, and, and the fact that you went out there and kicked his booty, quite frankly. I mean, what? what, <laughs> what? <laughs> I, was very, uh, I was very nervous and felt a lot of pressure to win, and uh, I was very scared because I, I, women's professional tennis, actually men's professional tennis, well women's particularly, was only in our third year ah. of having a tour, so we're in a very tenuous position. Right. It, it was difficult, you know, women never had gotten scholarships to sport in sports. Uh, there, had been, there had been quotas uh, at, like if you want to be a woman doctor or lawyer at the Harvards of the world, but here Ivy League you think, oh, they'd be progressive. They weren't at all. So mm. that's why we didn't have any women uh, in, in these areas of endeavor. So I really wanted to win the message of Title IX. I wanted to start changing the hearts and minds of this country and the world to thinking differently about girls and boys. And I, I, think, it, I think it did happen to a point. I mean, not everybody, but quite a few people come up to me. Yeah, I think you absolutely did, you know, help tremendously. And it really was kind of the start in paving the way for more women to, you know, obviously um, get into sports and get involved in all of that. So you are an icon in more ways than one. And I also wanted to ask you, too, about, about this, because being so athletically inclined when you found out that you had diabetes, I mean, what went through your mind? Well, I haven't. My family have known about it since I was very young because my first crush was on Fraser Branch in second grade, and he had type <laughs> 1. So I did know about it, and I think knowing it was in my family, and then also my blood sugar started to become elevated, and then I knew I was uh, starting to get close. And then three years ago, I am I, I was basically told I'm a type two diabetic, and uh, it's uh, it's a wake up call. But I also knew from uh, some of the people around me that you can live a great life as well, that, that you don't have to let it defeat you. You can defeat it. You can take care of yourself by eating right, getting exercise, uh, and doing the, the right things. And what I didn't understand is that uh, at, if you're 65 and over uh, Medicare, you can get it free if you're at risk uh, for diabetes. So I don't think a lot of people realize that. And you know, financial times are very difficult right now. So I hope everybody out there 65 and over will ask their doctor. And uh, we've, we've actually joined up with uh, Novo Nordisk to tell people today about getting this free screening uh, with your doctor. And you, know, we, you can go to a website called Ask Screen No. And the way I remember it is ASK. Ask your doctor, get a screening, and then know your blood sugar. So it's Ask screen no .com. You are living such an active lifestyle, and I think a lot of people uh, may think diabetes can't really be a part of that, can't be a part of an active lifestyle. How do you manage living with it? And what would you say to other people in terms of encouraging them to live with it and continue to have an active and healthy lifestyle? Well, I'd say accept responsibility, be an advocate, uh, take care of yourself, go ask your doctor questions, please get the screening, uh, you know, the ask screen no. Just take care of yourself. Go to the website, and, and then from there, it'll, ha it'll help you to get to that step to go ask, especially if you're 65 and, and over, because a lot of us walk around with diabetes or prediabetes, and we don't even know it. For me personally, wake up call, take care of myself. If I take good care of myself, I can live large with type 2 diabetes. If I don't take care of myself, then guess what? Who knows with all the different uh, complications that can come along with it. 
You know what, that's a great point. I want to bring the doctor in on, on, on this next question because my father-in-law lived with diabetes, but you know, unfortunately he didn't live and he was over the age of 65. He kind of just let it get the best of him. He didn't live that very active, healthy lifestyle and maybe he didn't do all the things he needed to do in terms of learning to live with diabetes, doctor. What would you say to people in terms of early detection and in terms of living with diabetes? Well, first and foremost, it's imperative that people get tested for diabetes. And fortunately, if you're over age 65, Medicare pays for it for free. You pay absolutely nothing to get a screening test if you're over the age of 65 and you have one of the risk factors. And these risk factors are what everyone needs to be aware of. They are, number one, whether or not you have hypertension, Number two, an elevated cholesterol. Number three, if you may have had what's referred to as gestational diabetes, where you're a woman who had diabetes during pregnancy. Number four, if you're overweight. And number five, and the key one, is if you have a family history of diabetes. And by picking up people earlier, we can help prevent the complications of diabetes that your family member may have experienced. These are blindness, heart disease, stroke, amputations, kidney failure, renal disease. So these are all imperative that we try to prevent these awesome complications from occurring, and they're quite devastating to people. And the sooner we start testing people, the sooner we can prevent these from occurring and give people longer, healthier, happier lives. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Well, Billie Jean King, thank you so much. But before I let you go, I really want to ask you this because I'm so impressed with your work for social change and equality, and I know that you've been important to the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. Uh, do you still get out there on the courts and play tennis? Well, that's, that's interesting you ask, Danielle. Uh, I just had double knee joint. Uh, surgery and I played tennis for the first time last week and the reason I went to get it I just asked the doctor I go just tell me one thing can I play tennis and dr. Rodriguez says yes I said okay now talk to me let's go and so uh, <laughs> and my knees feel I know that they're the most uh, secure and healthy and safe since I've been in my 20s and I know I'm gonna have a much better life at the end of my life than I had even earlier Wow. Well, you are such a wonderful inspiration. Personally, I'm very inspired by you and inspired by your story, and I'm so glad to talk to you here this morning on The Balancing Act. Thanks a lot, Danielle. All right. Take Thank care, you. Billie Jean. Good to see you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Doctor. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.